Okay, so now uh, let's simplify these equalities. So what does that mean? That means send the lambda P1 to the other side and then divide both sides by P1 and leave lambda alone. So that means lambda is equal to uh, del U del X1 divided by P1. And here it means lambda equals del U del X2 divided by P2 and all the way to uh, lambda equals del u del xn divided by pn and finally here i have the budget constraint so that means p1 x1 plus all the way pn xn is equal to income <gasps> sorry uh, so therefore i have n plus one equalities and n plus one unknowns i can solve this system of equations all right. Well, obviously, it is not so easy uh, unless those, uh, you know, del u del x i's are, you know, simple terms. But without knowing the utility function, uh, you know, I cannot uh, go further. I cannot solve this question. But normally, we know how to solve uh, n plus 1 equations with n plus 1 unknowns. At least the solution should exist. Um, okay, so... Uh, what can we learn from uh, this exercise? Well, one thing we, le we can learn is, for this reason, I need to uh, uh, open up some space here. So what I learned is that this lambda term is equal to the marginal utility divided by price. And price is, in fact, marginal cost of consuming good one, right? Because P1 is the price, uh, cost, uh, cost of one unit of good one. All right, so that's also equal to del u del x2 divided by p2 and all the way up to del u del xn divided by pn. So what does that mean? That means if you forget about all the x2, xn terms, just look at this uh, del u del x1 uh, divided by p1 equals lambda ratio. What you see is basically the marginal utility or marginal benefit divided by marginal cost is some uh, a constant uh, number, some a, a, a lambda coefficient, all right? So it's sort of a benefit, a marginal benefit divided by marginal cost is equal to lambda. And for the optimal solution, for every good, this is for good i, but for every good, this has to be true from 1 all the to n, all right? Uh, well, why is that? So, so suppose, for example, the benefit cost ratio, which I mean uh, del u del x i, del u del, oh, I'm sorry, uh, del p i, all right? So let's say this is greater than lambda, but then there is some good x j where the benefit cost ratio p j is less than lambda, all right? So what does that mean? Well, that means, look, I cannot have uh, achieved or found the optimal point because here, you know, this benefit cost ratio is greater than lambda. All right. So that means if I, <clears throat> if I consume a little bit more, I'm going to get more benefit. And I, you know, the, the benefit uh, cost ratio is greater than lambda and here is less than lambda. So basically that means if I spend less money on good J and instead spend that extra money on good I, I am going to benefit much more than, you know, uh, uh, the saving that I made from good J. So therefore, that means if something like this happens, there is room for improvement, uh, meaning uh, I'm not maximizing the utility function. All right. So it has to be equal to lambda for every one of them. OK, well, what if... Uh, you know, this inequality is true for every i, right? Well, that's also another problem. Uh, why is that? Well, I mean, that means the benefit cost ratio is, is, is way too high. Well, maybe, uh, I mean, I may not be, well, I mean, depending on the environment, obviously, I probably hit the budget anyway, right? It depends on whether this cons constraint is holding or not. If I, if I didn't hit this constraint, that means uh, again, the inequality solving all these, uh, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, uh, let's, let's, let's skip this and uh, that's, that's going to uh, cause more confusion uh, than its benefits. So uh, let's leave it uh, there. All right. So 
Another uh, sort of lesson that we learn is uh, if you ignore this lambda term, all right, this benefit cost ratio, the marginal benefit marginal cost ratio thing has to be equal across the goods, right? So if you remember, uh, we have this idea of uh, marginal rate of uh, substitution, right? What was the marginal rate of substitution? It was so. Let's suppose there's only two goods in this economy, all right? So that means only these three inequalities are going to hold. So because there are only two goods for simplification, uh, only these three, uh, I mean, only this equation uh, has to hold. But what does that mean? So if you look at this term, well, you know, del u del x2, send this here and send p1 here, assuming that none of those are uh, are zero. So I have del u del x1 divided by del u del x2 equals p1 over p2, right? So what was that? Well, that was, if you remember, uh, the utility function is a function of two goods. If this is the case, well, this is nothing but minus marginal rate of substitution, all right? And this is the price ratio. So remember the last time uh, by looking at the geometric uh, uh, framework, we had this marginal rate of substitution has to be equal to minus price ratio. There you go. We got exactly that, right? So therefore, when we apply this idea, the Lagrangian, I mean, to n goods, we're going to have exactly the same thing. Well, what does that mean? That means, let me clear this part. So that means uh, this has to true for any i, j, all right, so therefore, del u del xi divided by del u del xj has to be equal to pi over pj, all right? And this has to true for every ij uh, from 1 to n, and obviously, i is different than uh, j, okay? So therefore, you can think of this marginal rate of substitution of good ij minus marginal rate of substitution of good ij is always equal to pi over pj, all right? Uh, so that's something uh, which is familiar to us. So what I will do uh, next is uh, solving a simple example, but first let's do it in the next video.